Azad for giving me this opportunity to be here today. Most of what I am going to talk has already been covered, so I will just uh, run through the slides. And we all know that management of ROP starts right from screening. So uh, we have right now, as far as imaging is concerned, we have the RedCam 3 and the RedCam shuttle, which is at present a gold standard for only ROP telescreening. It has better ergo ergonomics. It can be carried for screening purposes. And as Dr. Anand has well known, it, the images can be transferred to the base station. The research going, uh, which is ongoing at present, to create an easier and cheaper camera for telescreening. But the main disadvantage with this is it's, it has only a 40 degree field which needs to be improved upon. We also, uh, we all know that uh, you, uh, the, you can use your smartphone with a condensing lens where it can be used as an indirect ophthalmoscope or you can also use it with certain modifications where you can, you, with a well dilated pupil in a young adult, you can even uh, capture the posterior pole. And recently, uh, Mayesh Shanmugam et al. have shown that, that by combining a smartphone and a 20 diopter lens, precise peripheral fundus image can be obtained. Another area is one with embrace innovations where they have come out with a sheet which is heated in a console. It can be used to maintain an infant's temperature by wrapping around the infant and it also has temperature indicators. It can be used during your laser or even during your pass plana vitrectomy. It is cheap and quick. Only it takes only 30 minutes to charge. It's portable and it's not connected to a power while in use. Also now uh, OCT has uh, been used for uh, in ROP wherein it is used to grade the cystoid macular edema in ROP and studies are going on to see its implications on changes in foveal structure. But, it, but in the near future it can also be used to diagnose and also prognosticate various pediatric conditions. In uh, ETROP, 63 of 401 high-risk pre-threshold patients, that is 15.7%, despite treated with traditional laser, progressed to fibrovascular changes and stage 4 and 5 ROP. And 57 eyes required vitroretinal intervention in the form of vitrectomy, out of which only 13 eyes had a favorable visual outcome. So current strategies for laser is like we, it has already been shown that you should have, they should undergo a dense treatment near confluent laser ablation, confluent laser and laser on the ridge which is still a little debatable and near continuous mode delivery. But uh, the, also, right now we have also, uh, there is a role for laser treatment of vascular retina posterior to the ridge, which are shown by Anna L. Sattal in, the, in a recent publication last year. So criteria for, uh, for po uh, laser posterior to the ridge is, one, a severe zone two stage uh, three ROP, which is not aggressive posterior ROP, a thick neovascular ridge with or without subretinal fluid, and more than four confluent temporal clockers of neovascular ridge plus disease in at least two temporal quadrants, at least 300 microns or more between the fovea and the temporal quadrant which is required. This is one of the uh, cases where you can see the ridge here and wherein the laser, two, two to three rows of laser was done posterior to the ridge. This is another case. And coming to the uh, advances in intravitreal therapy, we, it, it should, uh, we all know that uh, Avastin uh, nowadays is used a lot, but, uh, but still uh, one should understand that laser is the gold standard and Avastin should be reserved at least as a rescue treatment. The BEAT ROP study has shown that intravitreal bevacizumab monotherapy showed significant benefit in infants with stage 3 plus ROP for zone 1 disease. However, the safety profile was not uh, studied in this, which is very important. And we all know that serum VEGF levels were suppressed for two months after intravitreal bevacizumab in patients with type 1 ROP owing to the leakage of bevacizumab into the systemic circulation, which was shown by Vichy et al. They all, if you see here, also they have shown that serum levels of bevacizumab persist until eight weeks. 
and also decrease in serum level of VEGF was seen up to 6 to 8 weeks. So intravenous ranismab which is a smaller uh, molecule, shorter uh, half-life and similar efficiency as compared to Avast 10 can also be considered. Intravitreal bevacizumab with laser photocoagulation is not right now reserved for aggressive post ROP and reactivation of ROP after bevacizumab therapy. In our data, we have, uh, we have confined to aggressive ROP with foveal avascularization just to buy time so that you can go ahead with a laser. We did it in 67 eyes of 34 babies with a mean gestational age of 30.41 weeks and a mean birth weight of 1300 grams with a mean post-conceptional age of 34.73 weeks. This was, this, is, this was one wherein you can see the aggressive posterior ROP and you can see the fluorescent picture taken before the injection and if you see the, uh, this is two weeks post injection where you can see the capillary bed also growing. You can see it here and this is taken three weeks where it's almost uh, coming to the uh, aura. This is another picture taken before injection and you can see uh, two weeks later you can see the uh, vessels growing and this was taken three weeks later wherein you can see further uh, vessels growing towards the periphery. So the mean uh, post confinement at the time of injection was 35 weeks with a range of 31 to 30, uh, 55 weeks and 31 babies received only bevacizumab. The mean time taken for maturation in the bevacizumab only ice was 169 days and 36 babies required laser also after a mean duration of around 112 days. Coming to surgery, the, uh, we, uh, la, uh, la, we published this last year wherein we, we uh, took a 42 band and then split it into two. This is for its 4 millimeter in width and 1.25 millimeter in uh, height. So we split it into two. We made two into two uh, strips and then we in introduced them into the uh, trocar so that you, know, you can reduce the size of the uh, uh, length. You can see reduce the length from four millimeter to 2.75 millimeter so that it doesn't hit the lens nor you hit the retina. Also now we are, uh, we are shifting to smaller gauge in instruments. We are, uh, right now we also use 27 gauge instruments for ROP. This is just a video showing it. For want of time I will just skip this. And newer research. Uh, a few reports of systemic propanolol also have been shown in mice model to, to halt the progression through beta blockage in retinal angiogenesis. It is primarily used in infantile hemangiomas and the hypothesis is it acts via reducing VEGF levels. And there was a study prop ROP but this, this study was halted due to increased mortality in the treatment arm. The other area is the gene therapy wherein a recent report showed gene transfer in possi uh, is possible in rat model of ROP. The intraocular uh, delivery of recombinant viruses carrying genes encoding angiostatic proteins and small interfering RNA against various cytokines and their receptors offer the possibility of targeted, sustained and regulated delivery of angiostatic proteins and other angiostatic regulators to the retina. Uh, as already been shown by our neonatal friend, omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids also uh, are, have a protective in phase 2 of ROP pathogenesis uh, just, and also IGF-1. Uh, another area is the granulocyte colony stimulating factor which is still in the experimental stage. Thank you. Thank you very much and I thank all the audience.